why would I cut myself short of actually experiencing stuff when I can go out there? I may not be able to do it on the level that others do, but I'm, again, it's not about comparing yourself to other people. Yeah. And that's the beautiful thing about being this age. I don't give a flying rip what other people think. <laughs> I don't give a shit. I, I say that, I say that, and then I show up first thing in the morning when nobody's here. Well, that's important. So this is my interview with Corey. He's 51 years old from Louisiana, and I met him at the Gathering Place Skate Park here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, we talked about what it's like being over 40 and getting back into skateboarding as an adult. So check it out. Well, I'm here with Corey, and uh, as you might imagine, we're talking about the nuances of skateboarding after 40. Yeah, <laughs> and 50. <laughs> we were just talking about how actually moving when you're stiff and you're hurt and your back's thrown out, mm -hmm. keeping moving actually can be the best thing yeah. to keep it going. What do you... Uh, absolutely. I, I, like I was telling you, I, I try to stay active and been, I've tried to stay active over the past years, whether it's uh, martial arts, uh, Highland Games, Scott oh, Fest. That's fun. Yeah, I did that for a couple of years. And, and uh, of course, I've always been off and on on weightlifting. I've tried running, cycling, mountain biking, whatever. And so when my brother sent me a link uh, last winter, uh, to a Facebook group page called Skate Skateboarders Over 50. Oh, wow. And I had kind of tossed around the idea of getting a long board and just cruising because I hadn't touched a board since like 93 or 94. And I first got into it when I was 13, skated for about three or four years. And and uh, so the late 80s, early 90s, mm -hmm. I was never any good, small town. Uh, no one any, no one around us was any good. So the only thing we had were, were uh, magazines trying to figure out how to skate off of still photos. So I tossed around the idea, but after looking at that Facebook group page and just started, just like everything else, you pay attention to it, your actions will follow. You start talking about it, you start thinking about it, the next thing you know, you'll start doing it. And I bought a second hand board off a kid, probably a third my size. <laughs> I'm six foot, 275. Granted, it's a lot of muscle, but even there, I should still be around 225, 230. So, which is about 90 pounds heavier than I was in high school, and I was the heaviest skater I knew there out of four or five of us. But, um, yeah, so yeah, I, Northern Louisiana, there weren't a lot of skaters in Northern Louisiana. No, it and this is a small town just yeah. east of Shreveport, a little town called Minden. But uh, yeah, the, the majority of the people there, you know, they'd ride by in their trucks and, hey, yeah. cut a flip. Well, the, <laughs> the bangs down to here. Yeah. <laughs> didn't, didn't help much That's either. Tony Hawk squeeze. <laughs> <laughs> my mom got sick of it. You know, I, want, I wanted to be the rebel with the broken family, but it just didn't happen because my parents were still together. And it's like, oh. My mom came around the corner one day. I was on the phone because the phone was tied to the wall, right? <laughs> she came around the corner, grabbed my bangs, and just went, whoa, with the scissors. Yeah. <laughs> so that was the end of the, my Tony Hawk phase. But, uh, and so I got the board, and I found, wow. My legs are wobbly and took took a little bit to get some balance but it didn't take long before I realized I'd want a different board and so I want to go with something more modern not to be so obviously retro nostalgic old man trying to get his groove back kind of thing but wouldn't you know it everybody and their mama has an opinion you shouldn't be doing that that's too old you're too old for that and what are you you know midlife crisis I'm like no it's not a midlife crisis I'm, at the time I was 50, I'm, like, I'm trying to retain as much mobility yeah. as I can. My, my theory on this, they, 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 no one's ever said that about guys, middle-aged guys playing basketball yep. or baseball or softball. It's just that we're the first generation who grew up with skateboarding. So now it's yep. like, it's you, you, it's you, yeah, they, those of you who started in the 70s uh, and the 80s, they're, the guys who started skateboarding in the 70s are in their 60s now, mm -hmm. and, they're, and it's not uncommon at all uh and because you that's know we, we've seen our sports heroes the steve caballeros the tony albas they're still doing it that's a good point you know it, and they're just the first generation of them <laughs> i will say and, and i tried to take precautions i got elbow pads i got knee pads i got it's wrist good guards. to get back into i got it. wrist guards thinking that i was going to be landing because i remember, i can't bend my hand back from when i was and a these kid. are your money makers you don't yeah. want to and uh and i got a helmet and wouldn't you know it uh two months after skating went up forgot that you went when you try to do a, a rock and roll if you go at an angle that turns it into a board slide and the board just went out and I landed on my elbow Ow. tore the entire cuff and then so my boss was 
beside himself and just. But you said you just got back, back into it just about six months ago. So you, I I you tore it and I had the surgery in uh, a year ago April. Oh, okay, so that was the first. And back so into it. yeah, after about eight or nine months, I just eased back into yeah. it. Of course, you don't want to tear it. You just need to give at least a year. But anyway, I talked to my doctor and said, you know, everyone's giving me crap about being you know too old for that. He said, he said I I see far too many uh, injuries with cycling. Yeah. Because I mean, you can you can hurt yourself doing anything. And there's and so many factors that yeah. you're not in control of inside. Right. And I've I found this is just a quick, fun way to get your cardio in. And and you can the cool thing about skateboarding is you can do it at whatever level you want to. If you just want to get on there and just just cruise the flat ground, you can do that. If with Tulsa, you've got all these skate parks all all over, all over the place, and we didn't have that growing up. So if you just want to try some transitions and just and just flow, just get into a bowl or the channel here at uh, the gathering place and just, you know, try some different stuff. Now, the fear level is different. The, <clears throat> the part of that brain that calculates and assesses danger has fully developed at 51. So uh, I'm, I'm not trying stuff I did. And I don't care. No. I don't need to. Yeah, it's not about trying new uh -huh. tricks every day. Uh -huh. or but it, get, get but what you flow. said, just stay in the mood. Stay in moving. You know, I remember old timers telling me that in the gym when I first started getting back into uh, weightlifting back in 08, 09. I said you just got to keep moving. Mm -hmm. You got to keep moving. Well, you said the word earlier, atrophy. If you don't, if you don't use it, you lose it. Yep. If you, if you, if you spent the day resting on the couch and you see your back sees up, stiffen up. But if you stay moving, well, <laughs> an object of motion stays in motion. Well, you've heard the term. You know, most men lead, lead lives of quiet desperation. You've heard mm -hmm. that quote. And, and so men can have, and women, can have a tendency to uh, just resign themselves to living in the past or living vicariously through uh, sports on TV or whatever else. And, and I have it, just everything in me that just, that's just anathema to me. Why would I cut myself short of actually experiencing stuff? when I can go out there. I may not be able to do it on the level that others do, but I'm, again, it's not about comparing yourself to other people. Yeah. And that's the beautiful thing about being this age. One, I can afford the equipment like we talked about. Two, I don't give a flying rip what other people think. <laughs> I don't give a shit. I, I say that, I say that, and then I show up or first thing in the morning when nobody's here. Well, that's important too. But, you go. It's more about feeling like we're not in anybody's way. Huh? Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. I remember when I was and, definitely getting be way back into it. When I come into the skate park and there's a lot of people there, I just like, oh, I don't want to get in everybody's way. I'm just learning. Or just getting back to it, you know, but. Or you show up too late, like I did at the Jinx Park, and I'm just trying, I just learned how to drop in for the first time in my life at, at 50 years old. And I'm trying to drop in, and and people are just letting their kids run around with scooters yes. in the bottom That's of the dangerous. pool. And I'm like, dude, if I hit one of these kids, it's I'm dangerous. gonna send them flying it's up against dangerous. the other side of the pool. So mm -hmm. yeah, it is dangerous. So, so this way, I'm not in anybody else's way. They're not in my way that because that ruins the whole vibe but. Well, one thing i found getting back into it, it was about 10 to 20, about 12 years ago that i got back into it uh, is that as i met all of tulsa's best skaters like the guys who were in their mid-20s who were really the, the best mm -hmm. street skaters in tulsa and start making friendships with them through the skate shop that they were the most encouraging and supportive and yeah. when i go up to a busy skate park across the river um most of the guys who hung around just kind of talking shit never actually got out there skating much. And the guys who were really supportive, I knew them, and they yeah. were just happy to see me getting into it, learning to drop in, yep. learning to do rock and rolls, learning to do, you know, learning to skate the mini ramp. I've noticed that it's a lot different now. The, the few guys I've talked to my age or even 20 years within my age, they've all been supportive. There's not the gatekeeping no. that there was in the 80s for the most part. Yeah, it was a, yeah, it was a static, I mean, it was more I mean, of a hardcore yeah, status yeah, symbol. If, if you weren't hardcore, if you didn't go out every day, you were the poser. And, yeah. and so, you know, you're doing everything. If, if not subconsciously, you're doing everything not to be the poser, even though, you know, it's just, it's just skateboarding. It's just good. It's just getting yeah. exercise. It's just having fun. Well, I appreciate you taking a minute to yeah. chat with me about this yeah. because, I mean, no um, just it's something that we're going through and a lot of other people are going through, whether or not to get back into it. Yeah. Uh, obviously, the message is do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, if you're thinking about it, just do it, and, and but have a realistic expectation. You're, I, I saw a video from Dan Corgan the other day, mm -hmm. I know he works him. for Palin Peralta, and, and he was talking about how he just turned 
35, 37, or whatever, and he's noticing he's losing the ability to do the tricks he knows. And I'm thinking, bro, I'm, I'm 51. Just and, I, and I just, you know, just uh, another re-realization. I'm not trying to learn a bunch of new tricks. Yeah. Even though I am, but I'm trying to just stay comfortable, stay moving, stay enjoying it, stay healthy, because you have to earn a living. So. Yeah. <laughs> At least until I'm independently wealthy. Yeah, so. it's fun to just get out here and just move and just stay doing it every day. Yeah. Man, thanks for taking a minute. Yep. To talk to yep. You. No problem. Enjoyed it. Take it easy.